Have you eaten well or anything? I uh, well, I've eaten a little bit long long because long. this is going to be like. Oh, is it a long one? one? It's a long one. Can I take a break? I'm surprised you've not seen any of Anurag's films after Dave. Did you guys like have a fallout or something? He went in public and said a lot of lies about me. So one lie I'll give you for example, he said that I demanded a hotel room. A five-star hotel room? Yeah, he actually what? came up to me and said, listen, you can't stay with us, you're a diol. So I'm going to put you up in a hotel room. He literally told me that I'm saying this on camera. And what he told the press was I demanded it. But he's definitely a liar, he's definitely a toxic person and I would warn people of him. Did you know someone like that? The escort? Mm -hmm. Did I know someone like that? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can still ask, right? I mean, I remember seeing like a BTS video of uh, Oi Lucky where, uh, you know, you're jumping over a gate and Debakar says, show your face because I want the audience to know you actually jumped that gate. <laughs> so you yeah. were trying to be bunty as much as you possibly can, right? I mean, it's fun doing stunts as much as I can, I will. Um, I think the Debakar was a bit surprised as to how easily I was scaling. It's quite a large gate. Yeah. I was like, mm, it's, it's, it's okay, it's not that hard. And that's when he said, okay, I want people to see this. Right. I was like, sure. I think that's when the dog grabs me or something. I don't, I don't remember. There's one where I know I'm climbing and the dog grabs it's me. It's there in the BTS in case anybody <laughs> wants to watch this. I think uh, one more character uh, that came uh, from a real life person, uh, and this is something I discovered over time, not when I'd seen the movie, uh, is Dev D. And apparently that's you. <laughs> uh, I was like, obsessive what? in love, um, experimenting with drugs, uh, and a modern Dev Das in your own right, at least for the screen. Well, Would that be correct? Well, the, the, the reason why I wanted to contemporize the book was exactly that. I, I read the book and I was like, why do they make such a big deal out of this guy? He's a more chauvinistic character and then there's such a second, it's such a male uh, patriarchal view of a man and women mm. relationship. Mm. Where the women are just fawning over him, no matter what he does, he can never be right. wrong. It's a fantasy, right? And it's coming from the 1800s. Yeah, like, <laughs> There's something wrong here. So I was like, let's empower the women. Let's call out his chauvinism. Let me see if I can still get him empathy. Mm. As far as the alcohol, I mean, of course, he's an alcoholic in that. And I was like, I grew up in an environment now in the modern age where drugs and, and alcohol both, it's all available. Mm. So, you know, this is a tale that can be said even today. Mm. Chauvinism exists even today. Patriarchy mm. exists even today. Uh, but what didn't exist back then was giving women a much stronger role. And my Chanda character was far stronger than what eventually got made into the movie because she was an East European pole dancing escort who's fine the way she was. She was making great money and she's traveling the world. She takes pity on him, but she doesn't get as vulnerable as he does because it was important for me for having both the women not playing to his bullshit. But obviously it worked for Anurag where she was as vulnerable as he was and she was a victim too. For me, only, he was the only victim. The women only grew stronger from Did you know experiences. someone like that? The escort? Mm. Did I know someone like that? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can still ask, right? <laughs> can ask. I know all sorts of people. Let's just put it that way. Sure, I know. Including you yourself? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know a few escorts in my life. <laughs> you Chances. Know, uh, we've, we've obviously uh, touched upon Anurag Kashyap's film. That's Dave D. Uh, huge commercial success. Um, we've touched upon... Debakar's film, and these are like early works of these two directors, yeah. right? Uh, I'm interested to know, like, what do you think of how they turned out to be storytellers thereafter, uh, the trajectory in their careers? I honestly didn't, haven't seen anything on Anurag's after that. Oh, really? Yeah. Gangs of Wasapur, maybe? No, I don't think no? I saw any of his work after that. Okay. And with Debakar, I saw, I liked Love, Sex, or Dhoka. Mm. I felt there was something missing, no darling, you, uh, you don't need to get into that because you still saw the spark of a genius mind there. But then the Bjomkish was not necessarily like it. I feel like with a lot of these guys, the pressures of conforming are so great. There's a lot of insecurity. Uh, and then more money comes in, more demands come in. And it's very hard to retain your original sort of drive or personality that brought you to this place to begin mm. with you know so I think a lot of that has happened with me too I suppose in a way but I mean I didn't put myself out there to be that vulnerable because I knew you know unless I don't have my 
my group around me, I'm just going to end up conforming. So I just won't work. But I'm surprised you've not seen any of Anurag's films after Dave. Did you guys like have a fallout or something? Like stop uh, talking to each other? I, I de he went in public and said a lot of lies about me. So one lie I'll give you, for example, he said that I demanded a hotel room. A five-star hotel room? Yeah, he actually what? came up to me and said, listen, you can't stay with us, you're a diol. So I'm going to put you up in a hotel room. He literally told me that I'm saying this on camera. And what he told the press was I demanded it. So he, there was clearly a lot going on, which was not professional. And I saw a person who was a really close friend at the time. And I was like, whoa, OK, fine. I mean, that time I myself was reactive because I wasn't understanding what was going on. And I was reactive. And I was very easily manipulated at that time. So now when I look back, I'm like, oh, good one. Like, I see you. Um, Heart on sleeve and all is all very great, but you get taken advantage of. You're reactive. So he was a good lesson for me to learn. So then I just avoid it because I don't need toxic people in my life. <laughs> you know, it's life's too short and there's so much more to explore. But he's definitely a liar. He's definitely a toxic person. And I would warn people of him. Yeah. Would that be an exception from the early part of your career? I mean, you're also one of those directors, and I'm sure you hear this very often, every profile of yours would say that, is someone who's worked with the most number of first-time directors. My first right? five were all debuts. Right, right. So let's <laughs> go with them. Like, there's, there's Imtiaz Ali, of course. That was the debut, um, yeah. Reema Kagdi, these, yeah. these two, like, had and amazing careers thereafter as well. Yeah, Navdeep uh, was Navdeep also Singh, in the first uh, five, yeah. Maruma. Uh, what do you think of that trajectory? Like, the, how their careers went in terms of storytellers? Uh, let's start with Imtiaz. Um, why am I commenting on, is this what the show is about? No, it isn't, it isn't. I tell you why, I tell you why. Uh, because uh, these, these directors built their careers uh, on the basis of their first film that was with you. And the fact is, Abhay, they did not work with you thereafter. Yeah, and Anurag used that to say, this is why he directors, I know a lot of actors who don't want to work with him. So I was just like, yeah, is, I don't know if that, what, what you mean you're coming from. Like, mm. I, I'm not part, like I said, there's a lot of pressures to conform. There's a lot of pressure when there's a lot more money behind you. Mm. I did sense, get this feeling like, oh, you know, we, you're not big enough, which is ironic because when I work with them, neither were they. Right. So you have to kind of either believe in someone and believe in a vision, even if it goes against the norm, mm. or you can say that I'll keep my vision, but I will take bigger powers because I'll get more money, I suppose. I was taking a lot of it on myself mm. and I know I made mistakes but it's like no I, I, I think you know like the directors I meet today are far more secure in who they are and they're more willing to put themselves out there and take a chance maybe that's it I don't know it's I can't answer for them right. like I'm right. searching for answers to give you and, and I hate talk, making it about me when it's about somebody else right but no I, I mean I, I mean of course this is this is not directed at any individual yeah. but do you think at some level and this might well be true for all mainstream industries or it could well be true for life in general that there is an element of uh, someone being young and rebellious but you're really looking to get to that table and once you do, you just become the same person. Do <laughs> you think that happens? Well, I was definitely young and rebellious. Hmm. And I wore that on my sleeve. I guess that I didn't have the maturity to balance that rebellion with a little bit of diplomacy. I mean, I say it now. I was a rebel yeah. and now I'm a diplomat because rebellion got me this far. And now if I still want results and a rebellion is not getting it for me, then diplomacy would be my next. Right. I guess... So I can only speak for myself. I was no way a diplomat. And I was also speaking truth to power right. a lot. You know, I was calling out musician rights and, and, and producerial rights. I was mm. calling out people for endorsing fairness creams, mm. blah, blah, blah. So no one likes the one solo guy who's trying to play conscience in the you industry. You know, you said this somewhere, so. uh, something to the effect of no one likes a critic. Uh, they'll admire you, but they won't give you work. Yeah. Is that true? Is that something you faced? Um, I, I mean, I'm speaking from experience. Here's the thing though, like these are things that I genuinely don't think of. Like I'm talking to you yeah. about it now. Because I'm asking you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't like talking about them, not because I'm hiding anything, but because uh, it's not what I care to read about because there's so much of this has been written about and spoken about and I've spoken about yeah. it and I've been asked about it. I get asked yes. about it over and over again. Yeah. So that I got tired. It's like, and also I'm in that space in my life right now where I'm really, 
I don't look at the past. Like when Anurag said that crap about me in public, he sent me apology messages. Oh, did he? Yeah, he okay. did. Of course, that's Anurag does that all the time. And, and he was like, you want to shout at me, shout at me, scream at me. And I was like, I don't care. It's been 12 years. Like, you don't feature in my thoughts. And even now, get over it. <laughs> How much of this are you going to do? So, and I would never take him by name and say the things I said had he not gone public. Right. right. You're responding to I'm a only, statement yeah, made in yeah, public. Yeah, so I can use right. him as an example because he obviously felt free with me. Yeah. And so I don't anymore look at those things. He was really pushing me to shout at him and scream at him on those messages uh, of apologies. And I was like, yeah, I forgive you. He says, just forgive me because I've had a bad day. I said, you're forgiven. And so that's how I feel about everything. Mm -hmm. Everything else that you're asking. It's like, yeah, okay, rebel, this, that, heart won't sleep, this, that, all right. It's a great j journey for me. Mm. I'm really happy that I did what I did because you only learn from your mistakes. Right. I never had a personal agenda. It was far bigger than just me. So. I know that's why when you said people respect you, they not, may not work with you, but they'll respect you. That respect counts for a lot. Mm. And they'll come around and work with you, especially if you learn your diplomacy a little mm. bit better, because you make life easier for them as well. It is a tough industry, and, and it only serves your ego to rebel so far, where it's just you being the lone voice. Then it's like, you have, if it's not about you, then you find a different act, because you have to, no man is an island, as they say. Mm. You have to engage the other people around you as well right. and also learn from them see how they've survived how did they balance things out because not everybody's a hypocrite you know it may seem like that to you because you're on one extreme right and a lot of bitter people say that they just yeah. think that someone who's doing well must have done something wrong but that's not always the case no right? we do what we have to do and if what you do is not affecting you in a negative manner or somebody else then who cares what other people have to say ultimately you know we do want success we do want uh, to be seen and heard and if people are doing what it takes that's their life and I'm not bitter about that now. Yeah, I, I really hope you don't mind me asking you these questions because that's really what people say and it's only fair that I just bring it uh, in front of you because the other thing that I'm pretty sure you've, you've read about yourself or, or people have told you uh, up front is that if we look at your career trajectory right there is something that happened in 2013 the great movies one after the other and, and which is not to say that the movies you did or series no, I, I you did thereafter you. was not great I mean I that's you. a personal uh, yeah. you know it's a subjective uh, call in any case what you think is great it may not be great for someone else no, let's, you let's say, yeah go on you don't so what happened like did you lose your mojo look it's everything collective like I said you know um, I don't like talking about it because I don't want to come across like I'm bitter or like a victim. I right. don't care. But when you take a stand, then you take a stand. And that has consequences. And then are you ready to face those consequences? Like give me an example of a stand and how that could have had some consequences. I don't know. Calling out people for endorsing fairness creams. Mm. Um, so that's like A, B, C not going to work with you because what the hell? It's, I don't think that's, I mean, I, it's for not example, as simple as that, right? It's not as simple as yeah, that. Yeah. No, like I did a guest appearance in Shah Rukh's hero. Mm. Shah Rukh was one of the people and he's a really dignified man mm. and he wouldn't. Mm. It's collective. It's then showing up with a black eye on a red carpet and calling out Bhushan Kumar by name and saying <laughs> T-series, blah, blah, blah. It is, it is constantly saying, why do we have to have song and dance? Why can't we have this, that and the other? Right. It is then also having people like an Anurag spread crap about you behind your back. So it's the one reason. Right. You know, there's, th this all happened collectively and I take responsibility for all of it because I created, we all create our lives. Mm. Even when there are external forces working against you, it's, it's also your provocation of them sometimes. So I've learned to take that responsibility. And, that, and so yeah, post-2013, it was tough and I also took a back seat. So I was like, okay, now how do I, I'm not going to go back and pretend like nothing ever happened mm. and I'm not going to go back and now be a different person. Mm. So I'm going to sit back and just see what comes my way and, and, and quietly work. Now if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then so be it, you know. Also um, the world changed, right? Around the, the world same changed. time, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, there was the multiplex cinema yeah. uh, that thereafter became what yeah. is OTT now. Um, yeah. There was something that happened in multiplexes too. Up until 2019, there was a, you know, the Ayushman Khurana's of the world, the Rajkumar Rao's of the world delivering 100 crore plus movies, which has stopped happening now, yeah. suddenly after the pandemic. Yeah. What do you make of this change, Abhay? Like in terms of looking at media and storytelling, um, from multiplex to OTT, uh, from 
films to series. You're doing all of them, of course. You're like the OTT star before there was OTT. Right? <laughs> you know, yeah, some of the people said exactly that to me. <laughs> the technology was always here to create a lot of change, a lot of disruption. And that's what I was not necessarily directly talking about. I was just looking for change in our creative spaces because I felt like as filmmakers, we can reflect culture, but we can also create culture. So mm. why are we dumbing down our audiences? Let's mm. treat them with a lot more dignity and, and intelligence. Um, because if we don't, someone else will. And then technology comes in and does exactly that. Right. It is rapid. It's not something that everybody can necessarily adapt to very easily. Some find it more difficult than others. It's challenging. They're never in human history has so much change comes so fast. Mm. Um, as a creator, it's exciting because there's so much fodder, but I still have to hold myself back because you may be at this level of thought, but it might be offensive or, or far too way out there for people to digest. So you still have to kind of mm. temper yourself, but technology helps. You know, like a Netflix, you, this show will go to the world. Right. So you're not just being watched in India, you're being watched right. in Nigeria as well, as much as you're being watched in... And you could do this in the environment of box office alone, right? You couldn't do a trial by no. fire. You think uh, I mean, people watch with it, the OTT, what? it's a game of subscribers. Yes. But uh, that just means that they obviously will make the mainstream stuff that has a large audience. Yeah. But because they're a digital space, they can also make the non-mainstream stuff. Mm. They can do both. Whereas cinema can only make the mainstream. Mm. Um, once in a while, they come up with something indie, but even that becomes difficult because there's a whole lot of interference because they're so insecure making something different mm. that they. And that's what you were fighting, were you? There was that too. It's like, let's go the distance. Mm. Like, no, but let's put this in there, that element, which is completely mainstream. I'm like, either you, then you make a mainstream film, you right. know? Don't otherwise left in between is neither here nor there. So there was a lot of that happening as well. Whereas when the OTT know what you're signing up for, are you signing up to make a mainstream Bollywood movie or are you signing up to make something independent that completely shatters the myth of what a Bollywood film is? Right, the reason why Abhay, I'm uh, going on and on about this particular phase in your career, uh, in your life, uh, is it means a lot to people who are watching it who are very young, yeah. right? Uh, so you started around 2005, six, five. if I'm five yeah. is your release. So a little before that, so someone who was born then mm -hmm. is an adult now. When went from zero to 18, yeah. right? Uh, they need to know all those changes that took place. And you know, I was watching an interview of yours. I watch everything by Simi Garwal, like anything, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. And you know, you're sitting there. In fact, I, I actually uh, took that clip uh, to show it to you because I want to ask you something uh, from there. Um, I mean, never mind the rest of the conversation. It was more about you dating and you know, who all you can be with, blah, 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 blah. But there is a part where you, by the way, do you believe in astrology? Uh, more so now than ever before. Let's okay. Put it that way. <laughs> you yeah. do. Yeah. So you you read I, I, the the horoscopes. No, no I don't. I know that much. But do I believe it may have a, a real impact? Sure. Okay. But I don't necessarily go into it. Though. Sure. So this is the part where and, um, you are gorgeous, with a uh, with a tarot card reader. If it'll ever happen, and if at least pre-production okay. will start by the end of this year. Yes. It will. Oh, she says it yes. will happen. Empress. Oh. So basically, for those who can't watch this, uh, that you were very keen on the project, uh, you wanted to put this together, and of all the questions that you could ask someone who's a fortune teller was, if this movie is going to happen, yeah. what was this movie and what happened? I'd rather not talk about it because it never <laughs> did happen. <laughs> Clearly her cards weren't right. The empress who came was... A uh, the person also said that you're going to get married soon. Oh, they did so it? clearly all the cards were <laughs> <laughs> So much for believing in yeah. the arrow. Um, yeah, no, that never happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would that mean? It would mean that you have a director in place, a story in place, a script in place, everything. I had everything. the script in place. They don't I think it's going to work in box office, right? I had the directors too and they were debuts and really nobody wanted to take a chance on them. And they weren't willing to, let, it was their subject. They mm. didn't want to let go. I was like, okay, I've tried, I've come this far with you guys, we've tried so many people, they all want to make this, but they don't want to make it with you. Mm -hmm. And I understand if you don't want to give it over to me to make it with somebody else, so good luck. And that was it. And they Do still, you have a lot they still haven't made it. <laughs> they still haven't made it. Is it still a relevant story though? Someone copied it. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a quiz, this is a trivia night. Someone copied it and um, made what? Yeah. Oh no, it wasn't even an Indian film, it was a Brit movie. You want to do an international film? It was very much with the Desi community though. Okay. So it could, it's very much an Indian film, right. which is based in England. 
But you've had a couple of those uh, situations, right? Where you've shot a film and it's stopped midway and... I've never... had, yeah. <laughs> Basra would be one? Basra shoot didn't start. Okay. Production had... It was a zombie movie? The zombie one had stopped. Yeah. 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 Rock the Shadi, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, such, right. such a good script. Oh, well, there's been a few of those experiences that I've had. But it's okay. It's, again, it's the past. Like, I appreciate the questions. Mm. But I'm, I'm that point in my life where I really, like, I've worked through all of this. Yeah, no, I get it. No, I, I don't think the idea is to, you know, you sort know, of... Um, like, I don't, I don't care about what anyone said or what the experience was. They were all relevant. They all needed to happen to And they me. make you who you are. Yeah, and, like, today, it had to be that way. And even those that I may have gotten upset with, I'm not upset with anymore. And I also understand where they come from. Like, hey, give me a Bollywood film, I'll do it, mm. you know? Mm. Not too many, of course. I'll do one just for the novelty factor yeah. of it. But you know, that's how I am now. Like a song and dance. But nobody makes song and dance anyway anymore. They don't? I don't think so. I can't Didn't circus have song and dance? Song and dance, yeah. I think what I meant was nobody makes a dancing around trees anymore. I hear that term, but I've never seen so, anyone dance. Ironically, around. like even though I said we should move you in the song and dance, every idea I've ever come up with has song and dance. So Dave D, for example. Right. It was a yeah. musical. Yeah, to go from song to song to song. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like 18 songs, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, you know, like right. there's a background score that almost tells yeah. the story. So, and then one other idea I wrote also had music in it. Another one I'm coming thinking about also has song and dance in it. So I, it song and dance is not the issue, right? So yeah. I mean, I'm saying that it it the issue is that it's only that. But it has to have it. It's like, there's no problem having it, but can we have a little variety, you know? There should be that there's song and dance films and there's ones that don't have song and dance. Like, why can't we have that? Right. Yeah, that I was mean, very difficult. Uh, you know, you've, I know you made this point, uh, and I just want to be very clear exactly why I asked you this question that I did, is also to highlight the fact that, you know, which became a big discussion topic uh, about two or three years ago and it's been carrying on for a while. It's the whole thing about insider, outsider, right? Hmm. Uh, and I think you are the perfect example of someone who uh, the outsiders will think is an insider and the insiders will say definitely an outsider, right? And that's something you've had to go through uh, pretty much all through your career. I've been an, I was born an insider, but I pretty much lived as an outsider. Mm. I had all the opportunity to be in, for sure. Mm. Especially after like Oi Lucky and, and Dave D. Mm. I definitely had a red carpet entry into whoever I wanted to work with mm. at that time. We're forgetting Zindagi na milgi dobara also. Then, Not just later. that, I mean, but, but even before that, like post Dave D, like right. I could have worked with everyone, mm. anybody. Yeah, and, and that was also because I was born in a film family. Not just that I had successes behind me, uh, also that I was doing new, newer stuff yeah. and, and you know, I was so-and-so's brother and so-and-so's son and so-and-so's nephew. Mm. So there was that familial bonding there as well and an openness to me. So I never deny the fact that we have privileges born into the film industry, but that just depends on how you use them. I can go on about the fact that as a star kid, you're already expected to be at a higher standard than another newcomer. Um, so there's pros and cons to everything, but I'm not going to sit here and talk about the cons. I can talk about the pros. Cons are there, but again, it's not as simple as black and white. It isn't just that, oh, you were born in it, so you have easy access. Uh, then my, my, I put a post, I said, well, can we talk about caste in that case? Because mm. you're supposed to carry on the profession of your father and you're not allowed to move out of it. So how about talking about that, not just the film industry alone, mm. You know, it exists in every industry, nepotism does. And it more so in India than other countries simply because we are a culture of jati. Mm. You know, so it, it, it has a far deeper relevance than nepotism in America, where it also exists. Right. So let's have that dialogue. Nobody had that dialogue. <laughs> mm. Because it's just easier to point fingers, especially with people who have it more power and more attention, because then you can draw attention to yourself. They scrutinize much more than other people are. And that destroys the purpose, because then you've, if, what is your genuine attempt here? Do you really want a democratic process for everyone to have that chance? Because here I am, being an insider, trying to bring in new directors, new subjects, all the time, new actors. I never said no to that. And now OTT platforms are doing a lot of that. You, you see a lot more diversity than Bollywood ever had. But I'm not going to sit here and justify myself either. Like, if, if you think I had an easy show, then so be it. I mean, you're doing your own self-disservice by judging others, because then you'll get judged in the same way.